Welcome to the Hallie Elise Show, featuring your host, empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. She is an author, psychic, and media personality, and has been listed as one of the top 100 psychics in America. Empowerment psychic Hallie Elise shares the spiritual, metaphysical, holistic, and magical powers of the universe. Follow Hallie on her website at HallieElise.com, and all her shows can be seen via live stream video. Now, here's your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Hello, welcome to the show this evening. Love that music, you know, it always gets you going when you listen to it when you're sitting here. I get to play on the break time at the beginning, at the end, it works out really nice. <laughs> Anyways, what a hot day in Florida and yesterday too, and here I am wearing something that looks like flannel, but it started pouring just before I left the house to head out to the station. I'm like, oh, just going to get comfortable because I didn't want to get soaked and then obviously walk into a cool studio. And um, for those of you who are thinking, we'll use an umbrella. Eh, I forget. It's I've got probably like three of them in the car, and it's more inconvenient to get the umbrella to just hop in the car. So there you go. That takes care of that. Anyways, I want to remind you that next Monday is, I believe it's next Monday, I think so, the first Monday of the month, and that means it is the Psychic Gallery Night. And they set, the gallery goes from... You know, I'm thinking from 7.30 till 9, 9.30, depending on how many people we have. And the reason it varies at the end time is because if you come in, I guarantee that everybody who is in the audience gets a reading. So nobody leaves feeling like, oh, you know, she didn't get to me, that type of thing. Because I always hated that. Years and years ago, I used to go see Ira Salzman, who uh, was friendly with mom. And she's still around, and she's up there in years, but she's very well noted and respected. But we used to go to some of her programs, and it was kind of like, oh, hi, but next, <laughs> you know, to the next person. And so I always felt like, no, if I ever do this, I really want to be able to get to everybody. So I really do my best. When I have groups of 100 or more, mm, makes it a little tough. Depends on the time. I actually did a program in Boynton Beach not that long ago, and we had over 100 people, and believe it or not, I think I got all but three, and those, I gave them my phone number, and I just had them call me, and I gave them a reading over the phone, because, again, I like the idea of being inclusive with everyone. Okay, so, anyways, back to the Psychic Gallery. It is held at my office building downstairs in the atrium, which is absolutely beautiful, and if you haven't joined us before, you should. If you need more information as far as address and the fees and all of that good stuff, just check online at Hallie elise.com and you'll find that you even get a discount if you pay online beforehand so that's a nice little bonus okay so this evening you know i was really thinking as to what direction we were going in and there's so much going on in the world and there's so much going on with individuals and i'm thinking in terms of okay so often my attention goes to the individual and less about the world and the other day well actually today's monday yesterday wow Time's flying. Yesterday was Sunday. I was on with Jill Dane on her show here at WNN. And we got talking about world events and talking about how things shift and what people need to be aware of. And she asked me, what did I think about marijuana being um, accepted as legal and medical marijuana specifically? And my feeling is, yes, it's going to pass. I'm not 100% sure that it is going to be this year, but I feel like it would be no later than next year. So for those of you who have been waiting out and thinking, you know, I really need this for health and it's been a matter of fighting to get what I need, that's going to change. So it's, it's something to look forward to. And I was listening to some of the events over the news. I, I don't watch TV. A lot of you know that. So you won't find me sitting in front of the television morning, noon, and night watching the news. But I will listen and I will read. And you look around the world and you go, wow, there, there is just so much going on in so many different places. And, you know, what do you worry about first? What do you pray on first? And pray as in P R A Y, obviously not P R E Y. Truthfully, if you had attended the Psychic Gallery in December, I foretold a lot of these events. And I also shared, and I want this to be a reminder, because I know a lot of people, when they start to see atrocities and disasters take place and just people being unkind to one another, your mind goes to all of that bad. And the focus on, well, why? Why do they do that? Why do they do that? There's always a reason. And I could lightly say, well, it's because the human race needs to learn and we need to evolve and grow, which is all true. But what's more important at this moment is that you focus on part of what I said was these happenings, these circumstances that are taking place will literally push us as a race into learning how 
to be better to each other. And we will find, sadly, that there are at times what seems like a mad exodus where people are just leaving, whether it's through accidents or self-induced or what have you. And a big part of that is we are shifting on a vibrational level. And a lot of people go, oh, that's woo-woo stuff. You know, I didn't think you were one of those. But the truth is, we exist within a world that has energy, frequency, and vibration. Uh, science has shown us even just changing a paint color in a room can change somebody's mood. So keep that in mind for a moment. Also, the fact, and I always share this because it's so relevant, we breathe air, right? At least I do. Hopefully you do as well. We don't see the air, but we know it exists. It is the same thing when I talk about frequencies or energies or the fact that we are shifting or we are evolving in as much as it looks like there are disasters taking place and it, it, it looks like we're never going to stop, you know, that humankind is always going to be aggressive and always hateful and always difficult and always out for themselves. Not really the case. We are evolving a little at a time and you will start seeing pockets around the world in as much as there are commercialist times, you will see pockets where people are doing very kind things very amazing things. I'm noticing, if you will, circles or collectives of people getting together where their focus literally is on sharing good, whether it is through charity or it is through um, taking care of the earth better, but a lot more of this is taking place. And it's that old saying about it has to be bad so that you know the good. When you really take a good hard look and say, this is not acceptable, you start to make a change because you know you want something different. I was hearing about the man who passed in police custody and uh, from some sort of back injury and all of a sudden riots are taking hold. And I'm going, really? We're still gonna do this. We are going to lash out with anger. We are going to lash out and destroy because we are not in control. So I'm, I'm sharing this message because it's so important to take a look at not just what you're seeing on the news or what you're hearing, but what's your reaction to it? What's your response to it? Do you want to jump in and injure those people that started the riots? Do you want to see justice for the person who passed? Do you want to blame someone? Are you getting, if you will, called in to the chaos? You have to really address that with yourself and decide, is this a place where I want to be? If your heart is palpitating uncontrollably, because you were angry. You need to take a look at that and need to find out where is it that in your world, the outside world is really being pervasive, that it is really influencing you and not in a positive way. Because if you change even this much, you will make a huge difference. And when you connect with other people to do positive things, you make a massive difference. And I'm gonna give an example here. Also, while I'm yakking away, let me go ahead and give out the phone number in case anybody would like to share their opinion this evening. It's 888 888- Five six five one four seven zero. That's eight 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 five six five one four seven zero. Okay, I'm back on track. And I tease about going three sixty. I'll go one place and another, but I do come back. All right then. So I was talking about people and pockets coming together to do good. I attended a program, and I attend lots of programs that have to do with personal development, have to do with business development, have to do with mental acumen, because I'm pretty much fascinated by everything except for sports. Uh Uh-oh, I might get in trouble for that one. There are a couple that I like. But when it comes to the mind, when it comes to human potential, when it comes to understanding better what great masters have taught us, philosophers, I'm very fascinated by all that. I'm also very fascinated by science and, you know, what triggers people and why people behave the way they do. The idea of being a people watcher, I think I've done that since I was very little. Anyways, again, 360 here. What I'm getting at is I'm involved with this lovely little uh, mastermind group that doesn't just get, get together to brainstorm, but they get together and spend time going into the community to do good. So anytime there is a convention, there is a program, and it's, let's say, for four or five days, The group actually has a plan of action in whatever city that they're in to go do good for a day. That's amazing. I mean, really think about this. People are paying to belong to a group to educate themselves in, again, whether it's personal or business, to have others that are um, proficient in their skill set help them 
to perhaps motivate them or lift them up or perhaps share ideas that they hadn't thought about are saying, wait, we're going to put that aside for a moment and we're going to look at this area and we're going to see what do they need? What can we do as a group while we're here? That's pretty amazing. Those types of groups, those types of programs are showing up all over. And again, that's what I'm referring to about like little pockets. Perhaps pocket is not the most apropos description, but I think it's an acceptable way of taking a look because when we look at the world, we see vast areas where there is harm. We see vast areas where there's difficulty, vast areas where people are starving. I mean, we go on and on and on for all the things that aren't right in the world, and yet we have so much good. My friend Shaman Hawk, who has been on the show, and I'm sure you will remember him, he's been going out of the country a lot, talking about shamanism. If I'm not mistaken, he may be in Russia right now. He was setting up a sweat lodge there, teaching the people of that land how to connect with Mother Earth. Earth, that's good, you like that Mother Earth, (laughs) on a more, if you will, soulful level and also connect with the divine. And this doesn't mean that anybody has to give up their belief system. It means being open to understand more. Somebody, I'm trying to think of who it was, one of the groups that I actually facilitate, one of the girls said something about, um, she doesn't know or it didn't know if she was capable of doing something. And, you know, my response to her was, you are more than what you think you are. And that is true for each one of us. Einstein and several of historians have shown us that just because you are told that you cannot do something or in that moment you believe you cannot doesn't mean that's truth. The only truth is what is it that you are willing to do to make a change for yourself? And even if it's a modicum of change, it's change. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with the Hallie Elise Show. Thank you. Bob, did you see Hallie Elise in the paper? Who? The empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. They did a two-page write-up. The columnist was enthralled. Hallie went right to an issue that she was dealing with. I'm looking at HallieElise.com right now. What are you thinking? Should we schedule an appointment? Matter of fact, yes. You have issues with Sue and me, my business. Take a look at her background. It's impressive, and she has decades of experience. I want to put it on my iPad. What's her info? Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise. HallieElise.com. 561 755 2166. Spell it H A L L E Y E L I S E.com. So it's HallieElise.com and 561 755 2166, right? 561 755 2166. That's it. You're listening to Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise, and she invites you to visit her website for more information about all that she does at HallieElise.com. Now, back to your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. See, I told you, the music goes on, I'm moving, I'm having a good time. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, This evening, I was sharing about how last year at the Psychic Gallery in December, I made some predictions about different things taking place on our planet, and uh, some of them have already taken place, and a lot of it is sad. A lot of it, you know, concerns us, and most important is that we are seeing a difference with people evolving, people stepping up, people being more kind. There's an expression that I have used for many, many years, and I truly believe it with all my heart, and that is either you come from love or you don't. And what that simply means is not that you have to love everybody. I'm like, ooh, baby, come here. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding that unconditional love for another human being means that no matter who they are, no matter what they are going through, we will honor them. We will allow them to be who they are. We don't have to like it. We don't have to accept something that they put out that makes us uncomfortable but we can still come from a place of love. And to me, that equates kindness. It equates um, respect, really and truly. 
So I was sharing that I'm seeing these wonderful little pockets that show up where this is taking place, where people are coming from that space of kindness, that space of love and doing good in the community. And it was one of the things that I foretold, and I'm just delighted to be correct. You know, you can do psychic work. That doesn't mean you're right 100% of the time. And I always find that interesting. I had a gal who called me the other day, and she goes and explains that, her mom is an elderly person and she was coming downstairs at her house and um, somehow she left her keys upstairs and she can't find them and she wanted to know if I could find her keys. And I said, honestly, I don't do that. If it were a dog, if it were an animal, if it were a cat, I, I tend to pick up sensations that way. But keys, no. And the funny thing is I got the sense that her mother is actually the one who mislaid the keys, meaning... I didn't get the feeling that, let's say, mom put them on the counter and she put them in the wrong spot. I get the feeling that in her head, she was seeing them as something else. So she either, let's say, put it in an underwear drawer underneath something or perhaps even in the garbage, believing in her mind that there was something else going on. The daughter was like, no, somebody must have taken them. And that wasn't the feeling. So I'm waiting to hear back. Hopefully she found them and they're all as well. But you have to understand that when somebody works psychically, that does not mean they know everything. It doesn't mean that they're Jenny on the spot with everything. There is also free will involved. I'm always sharing this, but it really is so true. You have to decide what's good for you. I have um, a lot of clients that are amazing individuals. Um, we'll say highly respected individuals in their field. I have some folks in, if you will, the Hollywood industry as far as out in California, you know, different people from different areas. And what I find is they're all the same, meaning, okay, yes, one may have lots and lots of money, one may have fame, uh, one may be able to run a massive company, but guess what? At the core, they're all the same. We are all the same. And it comes down to simply recognizing that in yourself so that as you conduct yourself in your world, you can connect with that good, that good that I was just talking about a moment ago. Okay. I was thinking too, because it never dawned on me till recently that these people that I mentioned that are very successful, that they continue to get coached. Now you would think if somebody, for instance, is a billionaire, they wouldn't need a coach, right? They, they've accomplished everything that uh, they want to accomplish and they're moving forward and they don't need to do that. Guess what? They do. Perhaps it's a coach to stress manage or it is a mentor to help them really focus in on something, but they do. And as I said, I hadn't really thought about it before because I do a lot of facilitating and I, I don't perceive myself as a coach, even though a lot of my clients say, that's what you are. Like, okay, I don't know, it's something about the word. I don't get in there and go, come on, you can do it. Um, I operate a little bit differently. So I, I think mentor works better for me, but everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a teen or if you're 70 or 80 or 90. And today people are living into their hundreds. Jill and I were just talking about that on her show yesterday. The point I'm trying to make is if there is something that you're looking to do to change, to shift in with your world, uh, not just internally, but externally, seek out a coach, seek out a mentor, seek out someone you trust who is willing to spend that time to direct you or that you pay for, that you go to. I wouldn't suggest you call on like the same friend every single day. That can become a burden and they may not want to be in your company no, no matter how loving or wonderful they are. But if you are doing something and you're not seeing the results that you want, seriously, give some thought to getting some advice, to getting some direction. You don't always have to follow everything that guide or that coach or that mentor shares. But the majority of the time, if they're in the business and you want to check them out too, because like any field, you, you want to pick out the one that you know works. But it, typically speaking, if they're in the business, they are there for a reason. They've gone through things themselves that they've overcome, that they've learned, that they've been able to work with. I've shared, um, not too frequently, but on occasion that, you know, I had been sick at one time and I find I have some clients that come in who were not well and it's actually a gift to me that I had gone through what I did so that I in turn can help them and other things in life. Um, I have shared that I have this one friend who laughs at me because he says, you're always smiling. What's up with that? He goes, you know, the, the roof caves in and you smile. I'm like, yeah, I can't not smile because there is so much good in this world. And you can say, oh, how could you possibly say that? But really in my world, 
I wake up in the morning and I go, yes, I love my life. I woke up and I'm happy to be where I'm at and I take a look at my critters and I take care of them and I think about my day and I take a look outside and look at the the day, whether it's like now, which by the way, it's totally changed the weather. We have gone from really hot to rainy to it's windy and you better watch your cars and your plants and everything else because things are flying around out there um this is uh the boca raton area by the way in case you're wondering where the station is i can't speak for the other areas at the moment but the point is take a look and even if it's rainy there is something positive in that you know i just uh, planted a garden because i had recently moved and delighted that i was able to do that and i was saying oh my gosh it is so hot i'm watering watering these poor plants twice a day because i want them to grow and normally have a green thumb but i walked out and one of them was like laying on its side and i thought oh no i don't want to lose this whole plant well the heavens opened up the rain is coming down i'm being taken care of the plants are being taken care of so i'm grateful do you see my point it doesn't have to be about I made a thousand dollars today. It doesn't have to be about uh, everybody knows my name. It doesn't have to be about finding the perfect person. It doesn't have to be any of those things. It has to be about you allowing yourself to be grateful. Find something. You know, there's so many books and so many programs and teachers out there that talk about gratitude and talk about even finding three things a day to be grateful for, you'll find that you start to attract more. Now remember, a little while ago I was talking about frequencies and energies. We put out a vibration, we put out a field of energy. Normally that field is, let's say, give or take six feet, just in under normal circumstances, okay? Now, if you are in a space of love, if you are in a space of contentment, if you are happy, if you are grateful, if you're in a space of prayer, guess what? That field expands, which means that people that meet you before they meet you, as in meet you along the way, they're going to sense you. They are going to know that there's something nice about you or they're going to feel at ease in your company. Got to watch out for electrical stuff. My producer's probably laughing in the other room (laughs) because I was standing next to one of the the, uh, computers when I walked in when we were chit-chatting before I went on the air and all of a sudden it did something funny. He looks at me and he goes, you did that. (laughs) I just said I didn't touch it. It wasn't me. And I was teasing him. I said, you must have done it. He goes, I didn't touch it. This happens all the time, though. It's kind of funny. So kind of be aware as you raise your vibration, you'll affect electric. (laughs) You may find that your TV goes on by itself or the radio goes off by itself. Don't be concerned. It really is nothing weird. It has to do with electromagnetic energy. And you can actually research this, by the way. So I love the fact that science actually supports the metaphysical world. You know, we talk about string theory, which is, okay, let me backtrack a little bit for a moment. Quantum physics has shown us the existence of spirit, of spirituality, of, we'll just say more than what we see in our physical realm. And quantum physics over the years has shown us that everything has an energy to it. If you expand on that and you go to string theory, string theory has to do with sound frequency and that everything has a vibratory sound and affects everything. Now, think about, let's say, an opera singer with a glass, perhaps, um, let's say, a, a champagne flute. They hit a particular note, the glass breaks. Why is that? It's because the frequency of the sound, the frequency of their vibration, is stronger, higher than the glass itself. So it shatters it. So think, if you were able to enhance your own energy, not to break a glass, which is kind of fun, or to bend forks, which I've done, which is also kind of fun, but to make a difference in your world, meaning you personally, as well as people that you love and care for, would it be worth doing? Is it worth perhaps taking a few moments and just breathing or taking a few moments to say, okay, this was a really sucky day. Didn't like the way things went, but you know, what can I be grateful for? Well, I can be grateful for, I have four good tires on my car and they got me from point A to point B. There you go. What else can I be grateful for? Well, I can be grateful that I can see. I, I'm not wearing, you know, three inch spectacles. What else can I be grateful for? Well, you get the gist here. That gratitude is equivalent to love, is equivalent to a raised vibration, is equivalent to being in God's space. 
there is a reason that when we allow ourselves to get quiet, we allow ourselves to pray, that we feel different. It is not just because we're doing that action. It is because that action creates another action. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to give out our number again in the event anybody has any comments. It's 888-565-565. Can you believe it? Our time is up. Okay, so maybe next week. I am going to share real quick. I'm in the process of scheduling a gentleman who's written an amazing book on Buddha, and he's just going to blow your mind. And we have some amazing guests lined up over the course of the next couple of months. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be safe if you're driving in this weather. And I hope to see you at the Psychic Gallery next Monday. Good night. Be enchanted and delighted. Connect each week here on WNN for the Hallie Elise Show. Also on Facebook and at HallieElise.com. Thanks for tuning in.